Hey guys, so I know what kinds of things you want to see. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All right, I've been eagerly awaiting this locomotive for quite some time. And when I started seeing people in Europe come up with it on YouTube, I'm like, oh my gosh, it should be coming soon, should be coming soon. And sure enough, it finally came today. So it's the Pico 55916, which is the DC and uh, digital version of the East German Railroad Class 83.10 locomotive. From what I could tell, it's supposed to be Pico's new flagship model. Looks like they have a new decoder that they're proud of, particularly in steam engines, where it will have uh, dynamically blown smoke, and that smoke will um, you know, become thicker or thinner depending on how much the locomotive is laboring. So looking forward to that. They're certainly not the first company to do this, but the fact that Pico is giving it a try and this may show up in their later locomotives is something I'm really looking forward to because I think the big three, Marklin, Rocco, and Pico, have been a little bit late to the game on dynamically blown smoke. So I'm really happy to see them stepping up now. And I have some Marklins on order that do this as well. So let's kind of see what the future has in store. It's certainly a nice looking model and I'm starting to get into steam engines, European steam engines more now and I'm going to really love running this on my track. You can already see here that it's a really well detailed model. It's part of their expert line which is a step above everything else and is supposed to I think be near brass or rival brass and I think they've done a really good job here. All right let's put it up on some rollers so that you can see this thing working and it's it's beautiful it runs really smooth there's no doubt about it. Steam chuffs are synchronized just like they should be. Unlike the Brawa model that I had out about a week ago, looks really nice. I'll hish it for a moment so that you can listen to it and see if it's something that you might like to run as well. Like a lot of model railroad enthusiasts, I appreciate the little details, like this light over the driving wheels. I'm assuming this is prototypical. Even if it's not, I like these kinds of things and I always welcome them. As you can see, the lettering is nice and crisp, just like I expect to see from the expert line. And um, yeah, there's another little feature here. Whenever you hear coal being added to the firebox, um, it lights up just as if the doors were open. That's pretty cool. It actually has a cab light, which you couldn't see there, but trust me, it's, it's on. It's pretty dim. Uh, if you look from the front, it actually has three headlights, one up above and two that I guess are in the ditch light position. But now we get to more model railroading pain. It looks great when it's rolling, no doubt about it, but one thing that's not working yet once again is the smoke. No smoke, um, certainly none you can see here. Once in a while, I can see just really thin wisps of smoke, and no matter what I do, blow down the stack to try to clear out any air bubbles, anything like that, doesn't help. Also, I really can't hear a fan in there that is dynamically blowing the smoke. So I think I just got another busted smoke unit, and I, I don't know what it is with me and the railroad gods, but apparently I am not supposed to have any more smoke units. I, I don't know. I actually became very concerned about this when I was just initially running the unit. When I turn on a smoke unit, when I'm using a lock programmer, it always shuts it down because I think it's rolling only about a half amp. So if you look, nothing happens here. Turn on the smoke, just no smoke, and it doesn't shut the lock programmer down, which it always does because the smoke unit will just draw too much power and the thing will trip. So it got me really concerned that it kept running after I turned on the smoke unit, and I just automatically had that feeling of dread. Ugh, another bad smoke unit. If I use a locomotive that has a working smoke unit, I know it works, and I turn it on, it, it's, wait, what? Wait, what? It's not shutting down my lock programmer. And it's actually working. I don't understand. It's, every time I've tried this before, turn on a smoke unit, it shuts the lock programmer down. It just dumps it. <laughs> but what, is this one not working? No, I saw smoke coming out of it. This is made by Remodels, and 
like <laughs> smoke smoke units working even on my lock programmer that's no <laughs> it's just not possible okay let's try it again to see if that's not a fluke oh my gosh it works what's this opposite day things that are brand new and supposed to work don't things that aren't supposed to work do <laughs> i don't get it i don't know i'm just gonna chalk this up too okay the lock programmer doesn't always shut down when using a smoke unit but either way, it is the case that this new Pico steam locomotive, as cool as it is, its smoke unit doesn't work. And that's pretty much going to end everything. All right, well, I've got to box this up mere hours after I received it. And I'll send it back for either repairs or replacement. And when I finally do get a working version of this, I'll do another more detailed review and I'll let this run around with a consist for a little while so you can enjoy it. Take care and stay safe. quality and my thoughts on the matter are that I use them they're quality enough particularly when viewed from more than three feet away which is where I view my uh, train layout most of the time and you know they're they're colorful sometimes yes they're not prototypical but that's fine for me I don't mind that very much at all um, what I can usually kind of deduce here from what I've seen on the internet is regardless of whether it's branded AHM, IHC, or River Rossi, these are actually all made by River Rossi. And um, because of that, they all have some problems that um, kind of span across that entire board. And of course, you may think to yourself, well, if it's fine, if it's not a perfect fit, as long as it works right, um, that's what really matters. And it's not quite that simple either. I'm going to pop in this 33-inch wheel made by a pretty popular company. They have a good reputation. And what happens is, is this brake shoe has a tendency to squeeze up against the wheel and so it doesn't spin perfectly freely now it's not bad on top of that it seems like the wheel is just a tiny bit it just doesn't fit quite perfectly but again it's it's not bad and the solution that you get a lot of times is well 
just go ahead and cut back the brake shoe. 